Okay, so I haven't really explained everything to you guys, but uh, hopefully this will be enough of an explanation to start, and uh, you have to take me at faith for some of this, because you know, it's a lot of math and a lot of physics behind this, but here you have the magnetron of the, this is a schematic cartoon of the microwave, you have the magnetron waveguide in the cavity. The cavity is where you put your food in and cook it. The magnetron turns electricity into microwaves, hence where the microwave oven gets its name from. Um, what happens is that it produces these waves and it goes through the waveguide, which cause and waves sort of behave like light, um, not quite light, but uh, you can treat them like that. So it goes through this, sort of like spreads it out through a mirror configuration up here. Think of it as a mirror configuration. It's not, but you know, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, and it bounces off on the inside of the cavity, and they all kind of combine in the middle. And ideally, you put your food there. Um, if you look in the microwave, then you know you're you've kind of got a power distribution that's pretty heavy through here, and then drops off towards the edges. And it might have some hot spots and cold spots in it. And anyone who's ever used a microwave can probably see that. Well, um, it's a very simple way to convert. Well, we know the frequency of the microwave. Very simple way to convert well, oops, frequency of the microwave to figure out how long the waves actually are. And if you know your physics, you know that light waves typically are very small, and microwaves are also electromagnetic waves, so they're going to be longer than light, light waves. Well, 2.45 gigahertz uh, wavelength is equal to speed of light divided by that, as long as the dielectric constant is one in air, so we assume that, and we do some math, and we find out that we're about 12 centimeters, or 4.8 inches, is the wavelength. Now, how do we use that to our advantage? Like such. See, you have your antenna here, and a reference for it, and the antenna is exactly wavelength over 2. Now, there are other types of antennas. There's wavelength over 4, wavelength over 8, the power of two work as an antenna, but your power you get out of the antenna, or how efficient it is, drops off as a result. We're going to use wavelength over two. It's a nice 2.4 inch is a nice workable number for us. Now we take our measurement device, I've got one here, and you want to measure out 2.4 inches. By me dirty capitalist American pig dog, so I use inches rather than centimeters, and you all can deal with it. Okay, good. 2.4 inches. Now we take our aluminum and we want to measure out a 2.4 inch strip. The width, as of this point, uh, we don't know yet, so just make any width you want. We will try to experimentally determine widths in a little bit, but for now, we just want something that works. So, try to get something a little skinny, but not too bad. Um, I'll show you the width that I use in this. Now, it might be a little hard to see, but I just marked out 2.4 inch strip. And now, take your scissors and cut them out. And we have a 2.4 inch strip. Try to make sure that it stays as straight and as flat as possible. Uh, you're going to want to take this to your microwave. Try to put it in the middle as much as possible, although a little bit towards the bottom shouldn't hurt it too much. In fact, it might be designed for that. And I keep it upright, keeping scotch tape, one at the top, one at the bottom to kind of stretch it out. And try to keep it away from that spinny thing in the middle if your microwave has one. One trick I've been told, stick a cup of water at the side of it so you don't damage the magnetron. Uh, don't know exactly how much this helps, but I know it does help some, so. And now it's time to watch the fireworks. Put it on to a small amount of power, or a small amount of time. I'm going to use five seconds. And go. Direction does matter a lot, so let's try a different one. We're in 
more try. I was getting a little bit frustrated earlier because I was able to make this work and I was able to make it work before, but then I realized the tape is melting a little bit there at the top, so it is heating up, just not to the level we need. So it's possible that this isn't, you know, somehow not the right size or something like that. Could also be the power is leaving through the tape, although that would be a little scary, but possible, I guess. So let's try. This time I'm going to use a much thinner strip. This time only one piece of tape. Closer to the bottom of the microwave, you're going to get an arc from the base to the strip. We're doing something. Because now there's like a hole in the tape. We're on the right track. Remember how I said a quarter wavelength works as well? Well, let's try that. 1.2 inches. I'm going to try holding it with the two pieces of tape again. I know this works. I'm just somehow being an idiot about this. Let's try. Maybe there's just a cold spot in this microwave. Maybe I should move it over to the side. Maybe I'm just pointing it the wrong way. This time, point it to the side. Well, we don't seem to have been able to find the correct orientation, so I'm going to let the microwave do the heavy lifting for me and try to find the orientation um, horizontally here. Let's see if this works. And because I don't seem to be able to make anything work right now, uh, let's try 2.4 inch. Okay, let's uh, let's try it this way. Oh, there's nothing like a little bit of science to make one feel dumb. So, put this tape onto the base here. Well, I checked to make sure that the magnetron wasn't burned out, and sure enough, it still heats water up fine. So. Maybe this way? Nope. Out of desperation. Hey! So, as proof that this actually freaking works, ta-da! It tried to burn through to the screen.